In this video, I want to provide an introduction to conditional distributions. And in this video, we're going to be dealing with the discrete version of a conditional distribution and the way in which we derive a conditional distribution when we're dealing with joint distributions which are discrete in nature. So what is a conditional distribution? Well, the idea is that often we're dealing with the outcome of two or more processes. And before we actually observe that outcome, we're uncertain as to what it will be. But in conditional distributions, we're considering the case where we actually know with certainty, or we observe one or more parts of that system. So the idea is because we observe part of the system, that in a sense means that we have lower uncertainty than we would do if we were just dealing with the joint distribution. Also, because we're observing part of the system, or we know the outcome of part of the system, that actually reduces the dimensionality of our problem. So if we start off with a two-dimensional probability distribution, and we observe one part of that, then we end up with a one-dimensional distribution. Intuitively, we still have the uncertainty in the part which we haven't observed yet. More generally, conditional distributions are a way of going from an n-dimensional probability distribution to an n-1-dimensional probability distribution. And when I say going from nd to n-1d, what I really mean is that this thing on the right-hand side here is our conditional distribution. And in the sort of 2D to 1D case, then the one dimensional distribution is also a conditional distribution. Okay, so what sort of thing might I be talking about here? Let's go back to our example. So to refresh your memory here, we have an individual who is randomly drawn from the population. And before we interview them, we do not know whether or not they have a girlfriend, and that's represented by the variable y. And we do not know whether they go to the gym regularly or not, and that's represented by the random variable x. And the joint distribution is shown over here on the left. A question that we might have is, if we know that the person has a girlfriend, in this case, what's the probability that they go to the gym? So you see here that in stating the first part of this question, where we said we know that the individual has a girlfriend, that is actually reducing the uncertainty in our situation. Before we actually ask them or they tell us they have a girlfriend, we're uncertain about that aspect as well of the individual. Okay, so how can I work out this probability? Well, the idea is that seeing as we know that the individual has a girlfriend, we know that essentially we are restricted to this part of the table here. Because this corresponds to the case where the individual has a girlfriend. So what we can do is we can write the probability that the individual goes to the gym given that they have a girlfriend. So this sign here in the middle is a mathematical shortcut, which just means given that. So just sort of reading that out, the probability that x equals one, in other words, the individual goes to the gym, given that they have a girlfriend, we can work that out fairly easily here. There is only one way that that individual can go to the gym, it's if they're in the sort of bottom right corner of our joint distribution. But there are two potential outcomes that we could have. Them going to the gym is only one of them. So what we need to do is we essentially need to sum together these two probabilities. So we have on the denominator, 0.2, the probability that they do go to the gym, so that's this thing down here, but then there's also the possibility that they don't go to the gym. So we need to sum that on to the denominator here. And what we end up with is two fifths. 
Another way of sort of viewing this problem is that because we have essentially restricted ourselves to lie in this quadrant of our joint distribution, then essentially the probability distribution needs to renormalize itself such that it is a valid probability distribution, because it's not at the moment. It's got 0.3 and 0.2, which don't sum to 1. So what do we do? Well, we sum together these two things and we get 0.5, and then we use that 0.5 to renormalize each of these corresponding quantities. So on the top here, we would get 0.6 if we divide 0.3 by 0.5, and we would get on the bottom here 0.4. In other words, two-fifths, which is what we actually found. So that's intuitively the way in which we go about calculating this quantity. But what's the sort of mathematics behind it? Well, the idea is that we can write out the formula for it, the probability that x equals 1 given that y is equal to 1, is equal to the joint probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1, in other words, that individual goes to the gym and they have a girlfriend, divided through by the probability that y is equal to 1. So we notice that whatever we condition on in our sort of left-hand side rule here, we then need to divide through by that corresponding probability, or technically we need to divide through the joint by that corresponding probability. And we can see, in this case, this application of the rule works because the joint probability is just 0.2 and the probability that y is equal to 1, well that's a marginal probability. There are two ways in which that can happen. There's the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 plus the probability that x equals 0 and y equals 1. So those are the two possible ways in which y can equal 1. And we see that each of those bottom values just correspond to what we found before. So the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 is just 0.2. And the probability that x equals 0 and y equals 1 is just 0.3. So if we were to just plug those into the rule, we would get out the same result that we found before. So in summary, conditional distributions are a way of essentially updating our knowledge after we observe part of the system. That observation of part of the system means that there is lower uncertainty in the system than before we made that observation. Because we know part of the system, that means that the dimensionality of our problem, in other words, the number of processes about which we're uncertain, decreases. So a two-dimensional distribution becomes a one-dimensional distribution, or an n-dimensional distribution becomes an n minus one dimensional distribution. Note that I've assumed here that we're only observing one part of the system. That's why the dimensionality of the system in the two examples that I give only decreases by one. If we were to observe more parts of the system, then the dimensionality would decrease by the corresponding number of variables that we observe. And we know now the way in which we can calculate the conditional distribution for discrete random variables. All we do is we take the joint probability of the two things in our rule. So here we have the probability that x is equal to 1, given that y is equal to 1. All we do is we calculate the joint probability of x equals 1 and y equals 1. And then all we need to do is we divide it through by the probability that y is equal to 1. Fortunately, it turns out that the rule for calculating conditional distributions is exactly the same for continuous distributions, meaning that things are no more difficult when we're dealing with the continuous case.